Jiggers are small sand fleas that are found in sub-Saharan climates and are most prominent during the dry season. The jiggers are parasitic burrowers and are also known as chigo fleas. The parasite lives in soil and sand but feeds on warm-blooded hosts like animals and humans. In humans, the parasites may burrow in the hands or feet. The female jiggers burrow into the surface of the skin. Once embedded in the body, the jigger lays eggs and creates up to pea-sized egg sacs and continues to multiply by laying more eggs. These wounds are painful and cause difficulties for victims in daily activities. The infection can lead to severe inflammation, ulceration, and fibrosis. It can also cause lymphangitis, gangrene, sepsis, and the loss of toenails, amputation of the digits, and death may also occur. This is one of the most messed up gore stories ever. Daniel Philip Petrie was born in 1991 in Blumenau, Santa Catarina, Brazil. Daniel was 16 years old and his friend Gabriel Kuhn was 12. The boys were both fans of an online role-playing game called Tibia. On July 23, 2007, after Gabriel borrowed some in-game money from Daniel but was unable to pay it back, Daniel got really upset. He stormed into Gabriel's house to beat him up very badly and rape him. After that, he strangled Gabriel with a wire until he fainted and went on to cut off his legs with a hacksaw. Gabriel regained consciousness and screamed in pain, but that didn't stop Daniel. The autopsy clearly showed that Gabriel was alive when his legs were cut off. He died soon after with pain and blood loss. Daniel tried to hide the body in the attic, but failed because he could not lift Gabriel's body up the 1.8 meters above the ground. So he just left the body and decided to leave. Gabriel's mutilated body was found soon after by his horrified brother. He was then transferred to a juvenile offender to serve a sentence of just three years in prison. On August 19, 2015, an anonymous user on the 4chan website posted that he had killed several women and wanted others to guess who he had killed, and in return he would lead them to a body that he dumped in 1999. He further indicated that the first picture was a freebie because her name was a bit unusual and unlikely to be guessed. Eventually, when another user guessed a name right, the alleged killer posted pictures of a young woman on the thread, both when she was alive and dead, and implying she seemed to enjoy being with him before her demise. Several users banded together and found that the woman was Shauna Maynard, whose killer had never been caught. Although the FBI became involved, the user has not posted anything else since then and has not been identified. On September 22, 2015, the poster came back, but this time with images of a male. The first was labeled, dying, dying, and the second, dead. A body farm is a research facility where decomposition can be studied in a variety of settings. The aim is to get a better understanding of the decomposition process, permitting the development of techniques for extracting information from human remains. Nicknamed the Body Farm, the research laboratory in Knoxville provides a unique opportunity for CSI teams to replicate murder scenes in the most realistic setting possible. There are between 150 and 190 bodies littered among the foliage all donated by people hoping to bring killers to justice from beyond the grave. Two Girls, One Cup is considered one of the most shocking videos on the internet, going globally viral in October 2007. It features two girls licking each other's chests 
followed by one of the girls filling a pint glass with her own feces. The movie goes on to show both girls licking and sucking at the contents of the cup. Later, one girl has a fine specimen that she squirts out of her mouth a few times before swallowing. Then the girls start pulling the trigger and puking in each other's mouths. Tub Girl is a famous internet shock site that first appeared on Style Project in 2001. The actual Tub Girl image shows a Japanese woman exploding orange enema liquid from her anus, which lands on her face. If you're somewhat squeamish, you'd be wise if you chose to pass this video up. It depicts the execution of two Sinaloa cartel members by decapitation. The video starts by showing two men who identify themselves as Felix Gámez Garcia and his uncle Barnabas Gámez Castro. Felix Gámez Garcia confesses to smuggling drugs into the United States, which was his job as part of the Joaquin El Chapo Guzman-led Sinaloa cartel. Both men are seated outside a mud house. They are shirtless, only wearing pants, and begin to be questioned by an unknown gunman. The man identified as Barnabas Gamas Castro said that working for Sinaloa cartel did not pay much. His last job landed him with mere 300 pesos. After being given time to say their last words, the captors proceeded with decapitations. Applying the chainsaw to Barnabas resulted in a rapid spray of blood and albeit violent. Once Barnabas was chainsaw decapitated, another captor approached Felix and proceeded to cut his head off with a knife. Like his uncle, Felix took what was coming to him without any form of resistance. However, his death was long and slow coming. Nerve twitching and gasping for air continued for a while after the beheading started. On May 25, 2012, an 11-minute video titled One Lunatic, One Ice Pick was uploaded to bestgore.com. The sickening snuff video footage shows a naked male tied to a bed being repeatedly stabbed with an ice pick and a kitchen knife. This film is the work of a Canadian gay porn actor and psychopath, Luca Rocco Magnata. Magnata filmed himself stabbing Chinese student Lin Jun with an ice pick. He then proceeds to decapitating and dismembering Lin Jun, performing acts of necrophilia on him and feeding bits of him to his dog. He even plays with severed limbs and even rubs his crotch area with them. On May 24, 2012, Lin Jun is last seen entering Magnata's apartment building on surveillance video. Over the next day, Magnata is repeatedly seen entering and leaving the building, carrying plastic bags and a gray suitcase. Magnata was sentenced to life imprisonment, but will be eligible for parole in 25 years. Police also charged BestGore.com owner Mark Merrick for corrupting public morals by posting the video online. Anatoly Slivko was a Soviet serial killer and sadist who murdered young boys by hanging. He killed seven boys between the ages of seven and 17 during the period of 1964 to 1985. After killing his victims, he dismembered the bodies and often lit them on fire. It aroused him sexually. He liked to keep the victim's shoes as a memento and both photographed and filmed the entire process of so-called controlled hangings. On one videotape, the severed head of the victim was surrounded by severed feet in polished boots. He often fondled his victim and produced videos in which he would arrange the body in suggestive positions and masturbate. When Slivko was a young pioneer, he witnessed a car accident where a boy was burned to death. According to his words, he always wanted to recreate the scene as it aroused him. Slivko was arrested in 1985 for the murder of seven boys, seven counts of sexual abuse, and sexual interaction with corpses. He was sentenced to death, and the execution took place in 1989. The Dnipropetrovsk maniacs 
Are Ukrainian serial killers responsible for a string of murders in Dnipropetrovsk in June and July 2007? In 2008, a video titled Three Guys, One Hammer was posted to a website depicting 48-year-old Sergei Yatsenko being struck repeatedly in the face with a hammer and then stabbed in the eye and the abdomen with a screwdriver. They filmed several of their murders with cell phones, including the brutal slaying of Sergei Yatsenko, who was pulled off his bicycle and killed. Two 19-year-old locals, Viktor Sayenko and Igor Suprunyak, were arrested and charged with 21 murders. A third conspirator, Alexander Hansa, was charged with two armed robberies that took place before the murder spree. On February 11, 2009, all three defendants were found guilty. Suprunyak and Sayenko were sentenced to life imprisonment, while Hansa received nine years in prison. Local media reported the killers had a plan to get rich from the murder videos they recorded. After a foreign website owner offered Igor tons of money if Igor provided him 40 snuff videos in exchange.